a hurdy gurdy. But with a guitar fretboard, can that be done? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to part 3 in this video series about building a hurdy gurdy guitar. This part will be about designing and installing the wheel. If you haven't already watched part 1 and 2, you can do that here. It's lovely springtime here in Denmark, so I moved outside for today's filming. The air is cold and fresh, and the Mirabelle plum tree has burst into full bloom. Very nice. Anyway, the wheel. That magic meeting between the strings and the wheel. That is where the music arises. It's the heart of the hurdy-gurdy. On a normal hurdy-gurdy, the wheel is typically made of wood with rosin on it, or in more recent times, some sort of synthetic composition. Mine is 3D printed. The wheel itself is normal PLA, and the outer wheel belt is made with some flexible filament. I started out by designing the wheel in Autodesk Fusion based on a drawing of a gothic window. After having printed the first test wheel and the wheel band and made some small fittings and adjustment, it was time for a small proof of concept. For the final product I had bought some fancy smancy gold and tree color filament, but my budget printer was not too happy about this. So I experienced quite some failed prints, and uh, especially during long time prints. So in order to avoid this I cut the wheel in half. This also meant that I could print it without supports. And then I welded the two parts together with a soldering iron. The rosin that I apply to the wheel band is made from solid rosin, crushed and mixed with isopropyl alcohol. In order to get more room for placing and fixing the parts inside the guitar, I designed a backlit and routed the hole in the back of the guitar. I later made this uh, more artistic. You can see more on that in video part 6 in this series. Then I glued it on. To get space for the wheel and to be able to mount it, I also designed a front plate. I removed the bridge from the guitar
and cut this hole with my router. And then I glued that on. This plate will also be holding the bridge. More on this in the next part, part 4 of this video series. To hold the wheel I designed a wheel bearing holder and since precision is not my strong suit I made it so that the wheel can be adjusted up and down. I did this by inlaying a couple of nuts in the wheel bearing holder on each side. From top to bottom I have threaded rods going down and then I made it so that they are fixed but still turnable in the bottom with small locking rings between two plates and then thumb wheels to turn and hereby adjust the height of the wheel bearing holder. It was very difficult to get this mechanism fixed inside the guitar. Not a lot of space for my sausage fingers. Also I had a lot of failed experiments with the locking ring and the thumb wheels. It was not easy to find a good mechanism to fix them to the rod. At first I tried with heat set inserts, but they got pulled out when I tightened the screw. Then I tried small nuts on the inside, but they would just eat at the plastic and not hold. Finally, I ended up buying some metal locking rings that I put inside the plastic parts. Inserted while printing with a pause in the print. This worked. At first I had the thumb screws on the top, but it got a little crowded with all the things going on there, so I moved them to the back. Getting the wheel and the wheel rod in place was also quite some ordeal with my sausage fingers and took a lot of tries. In hindsight I should have used a thicker rod. This one is 6mm and it got a little bent and crooked in the process of installing it. Probably would have been better with 8mm or something like that. At the end of the rod, at the back of the guitar, is another wheel bearing holder and then the crank. This is where the hand control device is going to be installed. More on this in video part 5. One disadvantage with this adjustable wheel is that the wheel is very hard to get sturdy. It wobbles quite a bit which affect the sound. A better solution would have been to make the fretboard adjustable instead of the wheel. I actually thought of this when I thought about making the whole guitar from scratch. But when I decided on uh, retrofitting an old guitar, this idea died. The Luthier Ken Parker make some very cool adjustable fretboard solution for archtop guitars. And here is another similar adjustable fretboard by Cranmer Guitars. On a normal hurdy-gurdy, the strings rest on the wheel and bridge all the time and you can disable or enable one string manually so you can play on one string at a time or more strings at once. The hurdy-gurdy guitar is designed so that the strings don't rest on the wheel or the bridge but hover over and are being pulled down with the hand control. More on this in part 4 of this video series about the bridge, tailpiece and string holders and in video part 5 about the hand control. Anyways, one thing I did not think of is that in order to make a good sound, the tension of the strings on the wheel has to be just right. On my hurdy-gurdy guitar, 
there is a difference between playing an open string and then playing it at higher frets. Because the string is being pushed down more. Which means that the tension changes quite a bit. Even with the smallest action possible of the strings. Action refers to the string height measured, typically measured from the 12th fret. Even with the smallest action, it's an issue. Of course, the action can't be too low, because then the strings will rub against the other frets, uh, which will make some weird and unwanted noise. This could have been avoided if I had made it fretless. Then I could have had a very low action with the strings very close to the fretboard without any issues. I was made aware of a very cool fretless slide gurdy built by the hurdy gurdy builder Wolfgang Weichselbaumer, built for the Bulgarian hurdy gurdy player Konstantin Kuchev. Link to his channel in the description, and here is a little clip of him playing it. A fretless guitar is a lot harder to play though, because you have to hold the string at exactly the right place. As you may know, it's the thickness and the length of the string that determines its uh, frequency and hereby the tone. On a normal guitar, you shorten the strings at the frets, so you can hold your finger anywhere be behind that fret and it still will get the right tone. On a fretless guitar or a violin, you have to hit just the right spot, since there are no frets to help you. So, since fretless is harder to play, that is not something I want to do. Since the whole idea of this project is to not having to learn to play another instrument. So, in all honesty, I'm pretty frustrated and discouraged right now. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to solve these issues. One idea is, instead of having a solid wheel band, to make a knobbed one. Then it would not be like a bow, but many tiny slaps on the strings. This is how the Gizmotron works. The Gizmotron is an add-on for an electrical guitar, which is very cool. If I did something similar to this, it would not be so sensitive to tension changes. It would of course get a totally different sound and maybe not sound as much as a hurdy-gurdy. But, anyways, I will rack my brain very hard and see if I can find any solutions. But probably this weird instrument will not be finished anytime soon. So long for now, see you in the next video. Please consider liking this video and if you want to follow my adventurous journey towards building this crazy instrument, don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.